so we are ASA or ISO 100. If I point it at the subject, it's about three and a half, which at f 2.8 is 1 25th of a second. So we put the camera in manual mode. We are, what did we say it was? 1 25th of a second. 1 25th, where's 1 25th? There it is. Right. Refocus. Take the shot. Okay, what does it look like exposure wise? That's amazing. Really? Is it as simple as that? Nah, it can't be. Well, everybody, greetings. Welcome back to the landscape. Um, I wasn't kind of expecting that to go the way that it did, but I've already mentioned on this channel that I'm picking up film again and learning how to use film and film cameras and so on and so forth. One of the cameras that I want to play with is a medium format camera, um, which I will feature on this channel uh, in the future. But it has no metering built into it. I need to do the metering. I need to shet, set, shet, set the aperture and the shutter speed and dial that into the camera before I activate the shutter. So I need to learn how to use a light meter. And I'm just going to bring this light meter towards you. So this came with one of my Olympus film cameras. You can see it quite clearly there. It's a Buey boy made in Germany. Uh, not quite sure of its age, but I think it's getting on a bit. Um, basically a photoelectric cell that makes a meter move. And you can quite clearly see the meter there in the bottom. Um, and what you do is there is a, a, a dial uh, this outer dial here that I've got my finger against. Uh, as you turn that, you can see the numbers change. And all you do is you look at where the needle, oops, you look at where the needle is sitting. You dial that number into that outer dial. You set your ISO here. And then for each aperture, you then read off, you read off your shutter speed, which is exactly what I've just done. Um, but I wasn't expecting, I really wasn't expecting it to work quite that simply. I think because, I think because this is a digital camera and not film. So I expected the digital camera to act differently to a, well, it's got to be a 40 year old light meter it's as simple as that it has to be i'm amazed and the point of doing this is to actually practice on different subjects and make sure that the way in which i'm using this is correct before i get to my medium format camera with 120 film which is not cheap um, you know, i want to be able to get a reasonable exposure um, now, this is a reflected light meter, so you offer it up to your subject, uh, you know, the, the reflected light coming off the subject, and then you read off the dial. I know for landscape photography as such, 
that I should be using a spot meter. But having a look at the prices of spot meters on eBay, they're not cheap. They're well expensive. And as I say, this came with one of the Olympus cameras. It was a you know a camera, a lens, a bag, and you know, and, and, and a meter and probably some other bits and bobs. But because I've got this, I'm going to try and use my digital camera to learn how to use it. And I probably need to sort of turn it on the landscape in front of me and use that as a foil as well, which is what I might do next. The subject doesn't matter. What matters is I'm trying to get the exposure to be as right as it can possibly be, just using this as a guide. So I'm going to take a different subject. In fact, there's um, a lump of rock over there. I'm going to go and try that and we'll go through exactly the same process. But this time I might actually try and show you uh, the, um, the meter and, and what it is that I'm reading off it. Yeah, that's interesting. On a darker subject, it's actually slightly underexposing. I mean, it's actually quite nice, but of course, if that was film, hmm, not sure I would be too happy with that somehow. So I'm just going to take another meter reading. And that's interesting it was on the needle was on four it's now on three more like a sort of in between 125th and a 60th of a second so Ooh. let's just dial that in uh, that's the aperture hue and of course i've got a lot more latitude in here than that's on the meter so maybe something like that Let's take that and then have a look at the histogram. Yes, that's a much better histogram, I think. Uh, I'm not sure the Osmo is focusing particularly well. So let's pull that back a bit. So there we go. Yeah, the histogram, histogram on that's a lot better. But of course, this is the whole point of learning how to do these things. So on this particular subject, maybe I've actually bitten off a little bit more than I can chew and I've jumped maybe just a little bit too quickly. Obviously this is quite a difficult scene to meter for anyway. And of course your digital camera is gonna be looking at all points over the scene, whereas this is just a small reflected area. But I did notice that if I held the light meter more or less parallel to the ground, I got a much brighter um, response than if I actually tilted it down. And of course, the landscape around me is, is quite brightly lit by the sun, whereas I'm in a, a shady spot. So tilting the, um, the, the, the cell upwards, it's going to catch a lot more of that bright reflected light and not necessarily so much of the shaded light coming off this particular subject. Uh, in fact, as I do it now, the needles dropped even further and at f2.8, that would give me a 60th of a second, which is um, probably just about right based on that last uh, image that I took. So the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna point the camera 
at the landscape in front of me. Again, the subject doesn't matter. It's the, 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 the principle, I suppose, of trying to successfully meet a, a subject or at least come up with an approach that gives me a reasonable chance of success. So let's do that now. Oh, right, okay, I'm just going to look at that scene in front of me. Like I say, the subject doesn't really matter. And if I just point the light meter generally at the direction of that scene, I am, the needle is almost on the number eight. So if I twist the dial onto eight, uh, let's say, let's say I went for F8, that would give me, F8 would give me, as near as makes no odds, five hundredth of a second. So let's put five hundredth of a second into the camera, choose a scene that's roughly what's in front of me. And let's take the image and see what we get. Okay, so I've just done that, but as you can see, the result is very dark. But of course, in the time that it's taken me to set the camera up, the scene in front of me has also changed. Now it's more like seven, which at F8 is 2 50th of a second. So let's bring it back to 2 50th. And hey presto, there we go. What looks like a reasonable exposure. Again, it's not about the scene, it's about metering it. And there we are, look, absolutely lovely set of histograms. So, yeah, this is definitely a learning experience, but I'm learning a lot. And of course, it's not costing me a fortune to learn those lessons. So I think there was one key, well, maybe two key lessons and two key learns for me. Just by doing that exercise, I mean, when metering dark subjects, I definitely need to definitely need to take into consideration other ambient light and use the angle of the light meter to make sure that any other ambient light isn't giving me a false result. Additionally, I think when pointing the light meter at the landscape, the general landscape, I think I almost need to have it alongside me constantly because I can kind of imagine a circumstance where I would take a meter reading, sort out the camera, sort out focus, sort out the composition, and then the lights changed. So, I don't know, maybe I actually need to do it the other way around. Do all of that faff first, then take a meter reading, dial it all in, check it, then hit the shutter. Now, obviously today's conditions are uh, not working in my favour, but to some extent they are working in my favour in that I've got bits of dappled sunlight going on around me and that's created a confusing a metering situation. The flip side of that though is that that's actually forced me to learn quite quickly and to adapt to the conditions. Now I accept this is all very false because I'm using a digital camera to check my results, certainly in terms of uh, exposure. But when I get to film I think these are lessons that are going to, I'm going to value them massively. There is even a little bit of me that thinks, do you know what, maybe I should stop relying on the meter inside this camera and use something like this instead in order to hone that awareness of how light changes uh, within the landscape and how that affects exposure. Because the more I do that, the more attuned to it I'll become. And therefore, when I get to film, uh, certainly you know, medium format 120 film, as I say, it's really expensive. Um, my chances of success are considerably improved. But I'm going to leave this video here. 
Uh, I know it's a slightly odd subject, um, but for me anyway, it's been a really, really important lesson uh, and could actually been a very expensive lesson had I not done it the way that I've done it. And as I say, I think I need to keep doing it uh, to, to, to fine tune that skill. Hope it's been interesting. Hope it's been informative. Uh, if you like landscape photography, uh, then please consider becoming a subscriber if you're not already. It's free and you can unsubscribe at any time. If you've liked today's video, um, please consider giving the video a thumbs up. Uh, it does help the content. It, uh, the YouTube engine promotes it a little bit more and it gets it more out there. Um, and yeah, it's just good for the channel. But I'm going to move on now to another location and set myself another challenge. Uh, but until that time, uh, thank you once again. Everybody take care, stay well and stay safe. And I shall see you all on the next video. Take care. Bye for now.